I can still hear the cadence in my head. Drill sergeants yelled at my platoon as we all followed in cadence right back. Building morale within the soldiers, proving to them that we won't be broken. Proving to them that we won't give up. But still, we lost young and old, men and women, due to the physical and mental aspects of Army basic training. You know, some got hurt along the way, and for others, it just wasn't for them. And there's no shame in that. Not everyone was meant to be a soldier. But for those of us who stayed, we all marched along that cadence and got each other through it. A year later, I remember walking off that C-130 in full battle rattle after a very uncomfortable flight, having the Afghan summer heat hit my face as we rushed to the airport, still seeing the debris of the aircraft that crashed right before we left America. Later on in the deployment, I remember visiting Afghan civilians giving fuel to the adults and toys to the children. And one time giving a ball to a child, shortly after an adult pushed the child to his side, stole the ball, ran away, me chasing him, yelled at him to give it back. I mean, if the guy really just wanted a ball, I would have given the guy a ball. I remember in the, during the deployment, the sound of indirect fire alarm coming into our base feeling those mortars come in, getting a little too close to comfort. But as time went on, growing more comfortable, realizing no matter where you are, it doesn't really matter. Where it hits, it hits. If it's my time to go, it's my time to go. But I especially remember following orders from higher ranks, making somewhat poor decisions, pushing you over that edge when you're already on the brink of exploding, making you become a person you never thought you'd become. In a combat environment, everything you do and everything you see takes an immense toll on your mental health. Things going along in your head that you're not really aware of at the time. I came home in a very recluse emotional state. But to be fair, that wasn't very new to me. If you can tell, the name McNamara is a very Irish name. And I like what John Mulaney said about the Irish. He said, the plan with Irish people is like this. I'm going to keep all my emotions in right here, and then one day, I'll die. There's a lot of truth in that statement. When I was on the verge of coming home, I was messaging a lot of my friends to make plans of my return. And one of my friends messaged me, and he said something to me that really irked me. He said, I hope the Kevin that's coming home isn't too different from the Kevin that left. And I looked back at that message, and I said, listen, I'll tell you what's different. I'm a lot more saltier and aggressive. My sense of humor is so morbid, it makes my mother cry. But well, you have to adapt to that cynical sense of humor to be able to get to the day. And there's people out there that want to kill you and your friends every day. But I'm also incredibly more confident, self-reliant. And because we spend a lot of our free time in the gym, I'm pretty swole now. But my main fear coming home was having my friends and family tell me, you're a completely different person, Kevin. I don't even know you anymore. Then bail on me when I just need someone to help me adapt back to the civilian world. The funny thing is about the military is they taught us how to go to war, but they never taught us how to come home. Now, looking back at that message, I wish I was a little more insightful the first few months down the road. The first two months I was home, it was somewhat of a honeymoon phase. That this felt like being home was a dream, and over there was a real world, no one really knows what's going on. And over there is, is hell. So I came home and looked at being uh, vulnerable to my emotions as a weakness. And over there, it absolutely is. When you come home and keep this mindset, it will make you implode. It will make, make, you, make you alienate the people closest to you, ironically, the same ones that are just trying to help you out. Anxiety was a new thing following the deployment. I had panic attacks here that I never really dealt with overseas. I was anxious all the time, but not about my, maybe what you thought. I alienated others because I felt alienated. And strangely enough, the only people that I could actually feel like I was myself was with others that went through a similar experience as I did. So that's what I would do. I'd get together with someone that could make me feel like I was home, and then we'd drink a lot. The first few months I was home, I drank almost every day for six months. Now, sometimes it'd just be one at the other day, but more than often, it'd be to intentionally black out. And I wake up, find out I did something uncharacteristic of myself, get embarrassed. Then I return to my solution, and I drink. I was consumed by my own self-diagnosed neurosis, continually to belittle people, because they didn't get it. How could they help me out? 
So I, I, backed, I backed off and I remained isolated. Even when always surrounded by people, I felt lonely, always longing for something more. Now, a lot of people are surprised to hear this, but more than often than not, soldiers miss war. People think maybe it's because they miss the excitement, the way of life, I don't know, guaranteed three meals a day. But for me, the answer was simple. I missed the brotherhood, the connection I had. Now, brotherhood isn't like friendship. Friendship is a relationship between another person where the more, the closer you are to them, the more you're willing to do for them. Brotherhood has nothing to do with that. I heard someone once say, brotherhood is a mutual understanding between a group of people that I'll take this person's welfare above my own. That I love these people more than I love myself, regardless of personal feeling. Now think about how good that feels, always having that around you. And then you come home and you lose that. You come home and you're not really sure you can trust. When push comes to shove, who has your back and who does actually love you? You always have this feeling of being a fish out of water, or probably more accurate, a wolf in sheep's clothing, and nobody's fooled. But I was more fortunate than, not, than other soldiers coming home, being in the reserves. When I came home, a lot of my brothers in arms were no more than a quick drive away. And that was nice. And it was six months until I returned to Bridgewater State, and during those six months, I kept on losing more of that brotherhood, and losing that person that I can call that would help me out. But luckily, I returned from, to, from that brotherhood to another brotherhood, my fraternity here on campus, Phi Kappa Theta. And they helped me adjust back to the civilian world more than they really know. It was, um, when I returned to Bridgewater State that fall, I was in a intro to public speaking class. And the professor and I had a very good relationship. One day, he took me aside after class and he said to me, he just thanked me for being a leader in the class. And by so, just sitting in front of the class, paying attention intensively to other people's speeches, and sharing something real within that classroom. He said to me, that's leadership. And that was a small moment, but before it impacted a lot of decisions I made in the future. Others shared in that classroom, and no matter how small you thought their experience or their story was, they were able to do it. When people, when people share their life in a public form, it's very scary. But inspiring others to do so makes it easier, easier for them. And along the way, they learn something about their own truth when they do it. Now, I feel like there's a universal lesson that can be gained from my experience. My experience my struggle of coming home and adapting to the civilian world. If there's anyone out in the audience that has maybe served in a combat zone, had a family member, or go through an emotional strife, like getting sick, forming an addiction, being a victim of a violent crime. You want to change something like your relationship or your career altogether. You're struggling with money. Or you just despise one aspect of your life. You don't think you know how to or have the courage to change. I guarantee the person next to you is going through it at some level. You now I have a goal after I graduate Bridgewater State to go to law school. I have a general goal in life to try to be a positive influence in my community. But I can't do that if I don't let people in, if I don't realize the world is bigger than my problems. Self-loathing is selfish, and the guilt of your mistakes will only get in the way of true change. And if you want to make a change in yourself, or something around you, take yourself out of your own situation and pause. As we all march through life, it is very rare that we're marching through in the same cadence. But just remember, one moment, one voice, one conversation, you can bring others within your cadence and makes that march of life that much easier. Forgive others, but more importantly, forgive yourself. To me, true wealth in life is love, music, sports, family, and freedom. Be true to you and be true to what you love, and you will inspire others to do the same. Thank you.